Hello and welcome back. The last time we talked about the enzymatic reactions and today we will talk about the process of digestion in man. So actually the digestion process begins from the mouth cavity and the food descends through the esophagus to the stomach and through the small intestine, the large intestine, the anus and then it outside the body. So the first thing we will begin with is called the buccal digestion. And it's called a buccal digestion because it begins from the buccal cavity, which means actually the mouth. So when the food enters the mouth, we can draw it. this here we have the nose and this is the mouth cavity so when the food enters the mouth we cut the food with our teeth so the teeth are differentiated into three groups first which are incisors to cut the food and we have then the premolars or the canines to tear down the food and then we have the premolars and mortars to crush down the food and also inside the mouth there is a tongue to manipulate the food and mix it with salivary juices because here we said before that the digestion is done by the help of enzymatic reaction so the first enzymes here in the digestion are produced from the salivary glands and they are three glands uh, they are three glands this is called the parotid gland and it's situated nearly behind the nose we have the submandibular And here the mandible. Mandible actually means the lower jaw. So it's called submandibular because it's situated in the lower jaw. And we have here the sublingual. Not actually here. Like this. Here we have sublingual. because it's situated under the tongue so these salivary glands produces something called the amylase or thialin enzyme And this enzyme works in a weak alkaline medium. It works in a weak alkaline medium. And here its action is to 
catalyze dehydrolysis of starch to disaccharide maltose. And it's called disaccharide because when it's broken down, it gives rise to two sugar molecules. So it's, it converts the starch into disaccharide maltose. So when the food descends downwards here, we have a type of reflex action, involuntary reflex action, because here in this tube, this part is called the pharynx. There's another tube like this. And this tube here is called the trochea. And the trochea leads to the lungs. So if the food descends in the trochea, there would be a great problem in the respiration. So here is the reflex action. As the food descends through the pharynx, there are two things here at the opening of the trochea, which is called the epiglottis and glottis. So when this epiglottis closes over the glottis, the food cannot pass through the trochea and so this is a kind of reflex action to prevent the food from descending through trochea and falling into the respiratory system. After that, the food descends downwards. So how does the food descend downwards? First, this tube is called the esophagus. And this esophagus is about 25 centimeters long. It extends in front of the vertebral column, parallel to it. And the food descends through the esophagus by a reflex action also called peristalsis. Peristalsis. So how does this peristalsis work? The food here in the esophagus is pushed downwards by a series of rhythmical contractions and rel relaxation of the walls of it. So here we have the food bolus descending like this. Till it reaches the stomach downwards. So we have here contractions and here there are relaxation till the food falls down into the stomach. And this type of action really helps in churning the food. So as if, it, if there wasn't any food mixed or churned inside the mouth by the work of the teeth, it may be churned by the action of this peristalsis, and it also mixes the food with the digestive juices because there are glands in the inside lining of the esophagus which produce some in digestive juices, and then the food falls down into the stomach. And that was our lesson today. The next time we will talk about the food inside the stomach, how it is digested. And until then, I thank you for watching and see you next time.